Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. We are continuing our look, uh, Alice through the looking glass into the worst performing tanks at tier 8. And we're now at the TDs, which brings us to this little beastie, the Jag Panther 2. Now, according to Blitz Stars, which you have there, this is the worst performing tier 8 TD. It's actually worse, apparently, than that of the T28. You know, the big sausage with a gun. So the win rate on this tank after 604 battles is only 47.54%. It has an average damage per battle of 1.2 and an average kills of just under 0 0.7 with a survival rate of 27.99%. Now admittedly that's a better survival rate than the AMX AC48 and the SU-101, but it's still not great. So there is something not sitting well with the player base in this tank. Thing is, TDs are not the easiest of tanks to drive, to be perfectly honest with you. A lot of people think they are. Oh, I'll just camp at the back and smack. To an extent, that's pretty true. But the thing about TDs is that you really do need a team around you. Why? Well, let's have a look at this little Yag Panther 2. Now, the thing about the Yag Panther, as you can see, it's got no turret. It's a fixed casemate. That means the sides and the back of this tank are incredibly vulnerable. Okay, they're going to be lightly armored. And it, because it doesn't have the turret, it has to turn its entire hull. So it's pretty easy to circle to death because it ain't the fastest tank out there. Let's have a look at some of its parameters when we have a look at how the tank statistics are. So we are looking at the overall parameters of this tank. And as you can see, it's got 1,219 hit points. Not that great. The armor frontally is 104. Not that great. The sides, 62 not that great. The rear, 42. Not that great. It's got a view range of 260. Remember, I've got certain equipment on this. So again, that's not brilliant. The concealment's not too bad. 57% when stationary, 43% when moving, and 15% when firing. It's got pretty decent DPM, almost 3,000. That's not bad. It's got just over a nine second reload. Again, not too bad. It's dishing out 246 on its AP in penetration, 311 on the APCR and 65 on the HE. 65 is a little bit low. Damage wise, 460 on its AP, 390 on the APCR and 600 on the HE. It's got a pretty decent aim time, less than four seconds. And pretty good dispersion, 0.289. Remember, I'm using a refined gun and the equipment you load reduces certain bits in bobs. It's got pretty bad gun depression, only six degrees. It is, after all, sort of rear-mounted casemate, but 15 degrees going upwards. The turret turn, that's the gun inside the casemate moving this way and that way, is 10 degrees. That's not too bad. That's 10 degrees before the hull has to start moving, by the way. Maneuverability, it's not too slow. 50 going forwards, 12 going backwards, with an average of 32. And its terrain crossing ability isn't bad either. So. What is it about this tank that just makes everybody, realistically, struggle? Well, to be perfectly honest with you, it is this, the armor. Now the armor on this tank ain't exactly brilliant. This is it facing off against the Tiger II. And as you can see already, that lower hull is wide open. Now, it's got six degrees of gun depression, so let's put the gun depression down and let's stick it all down. Doesn't really help too much. Okay, the case mate itself is pretty, pretty hardcore. So if you're aiming for the turret, those cheeks are pretty, pretty thick. But why would you make a shot so small when you can aim for this? And it's a pretty tall tank, to be honest with you. And this is where the problems with the Jag Panther II start to sort of manifest. The armor just isn't brilliant at the front. Now, when I turn it, it can it sides great? Well, it can, but you're still gonna pen the front of it. 
What about the sides? Well, if you go side on, then you're just wide open. And the rear, well, if you go rear, it's just wide open and susceptible to HE. So this is not an easy tank to play. You need to have it in a kind of hullish down position, but not too hull down that you can't actually get the gun to work. And therein lies your problem, nine times out of 10. So considering its lack of armor, what can we do to sort of make this tank I don't know, perform. Well, let's go and have a look at the equipment and what we can load up. This is my equipment loadout for the Jagdpanther 2. I'm not saying that this is the best loadout. I'm not saying this is the perfect loadout, but this is what I use and I, I you know, I, I have reasonable success with it. First and foremost, I don't use of the calibrated shells. It gives me an extra 12 penetration. But the thing is, I think the Yang Panther 2 has got good enough penetration anyway, so I don't use the calibrated shells. I use the, the gun runner. That allows me to have better DPM and a better reload time. Something that I think that the Yang Panther 2 really does need. I then have, as always, the defense system. And I then run it with a camo net. Why? I mean, I'm, I'm a TD. And nine times out of 10, I'm gonna be sat at the back. Maybe not sat all the way at the back, but I'm going to be not on the front line, not until unnecessary. I then use the supercharge. Why? I mean, I could use the enhanced gun laying device, but my aim time is good enough. So I use the supercharge because from distance, if I am sat at the back, I want to get those penetrating shots. Simple. I then use the additional hit points instead of the enhanced tool armor. Why? Because what's the point? My turret is thick enough already, to be honest with you. The hull, 4% ain't going to make that much of a difference. Not really. So I want the additional hit points, just in case. I've then got the engine accelerator. I want to be able to move around the battlefield. I then use the refined gun. Again, I'm going to sat, be sat you know, primarily at the back. So I want that dispersion to be really reduced. I could use the vertical stab, but I'm not gonna be firing on the move and the aim time again is good enough. So it's much better for me to use the refined gun. Then I've got the toolbox and then I've got the iron consumables. Moving over to the consumables, got two repair kits because I don't need a speed boost and the adrenaline, standard loadout for me. Provision wise, well, I want the crew to be working to their top. So I've got the chocolate. That reduces everything. View range, DPM, reload time, the works. I've then got the protective kit, because why not? And then I've actually got the improved fuel, because again, I think it's just gonna give me what I need. I could go for another chocolate bar, to be honest with you, but that just drops my speed and mobility down a little bit, which I don't really want. I still wanna be slightly mobile, hence the reason why the improves fuel. Loadout. Well, I'm taking 15 AP, 10 APCR, and only 5 HE. That's my loadout. Not saying it's perfect, not saying it's going to be fantastic, but it works for me. But what is this tank actually like to play, and what realistically do you need to consider to get the most out of this tank? Well, let's have a look at a couple of games. So here we are in the Jagdpanther 2, rolling out on desert sands. Now again, I'm tuned up with my erstwhile and long-suffering teammate, Ephelop, who's also in the Jagdpanther 2. The thing is, the problem with this tank, as I said, is its lower hull. It is pretty thin. Not only that, it's not exactly, you know, the most maneuverable of tanks. It's pretty good for a TD, don't get me wrong, but it sits very high and it's very, very tall. So it can be spotted from quite a few distances and quite a few places. So putting this thing right in the right place on the map is critical. Now, we're gonna try here and be sort of a little bit, I mean, he trapped me unfortunately, which is why the shot went wayward. We've now got somebody flanking from behind. We've lost a bit of hit points because the Louvre tracked us and our shot went a bit wayward. And then we got pinged from the back. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna try and put this little bit of a tanky here in a bit of a hard time may not get away with that I mean he's gonna run away but I'm gonna chase him down the tracks again I'm gonna be sat kind of at the back of the map at least then I can try and get some shot across you can see that mobility wise it's pretty nifty going forwards it, the mobility on the tank isn't as bad as one would think 
from distance with the refined gun. We just wait for it to come down and we get some good shots into the louver there. The Type 62 has done a runner, so no point to us being there again. Take the shot, run away. That is one of the things you have to remember when being a TD sniper. If you stay in the same spot, the chances are you're going to get spotted. Even if you're not spotted, they're going to put those blind shots in. And the blind shots, well, you know, they're going to get lucky because they generally know where you are. Now the Type 62 makes a big mistake. So we put a good roll into him. He's still, he's going to put one into us though, but we should be able to either, he's tracked me. So maybe I can finish him off, or if not, my teammate will, and he does. We're not doing particularly well here. We've lost three tanks. Thankfully, they've now lost three tanks, but uh, we are backs against the wall a little bit. That was a wayward shot onto the glacial. I was trying to get one into the glacial before he pushed round, but unfortunately he did push round. Maybe we can finish him off now? Yes, we can. So it's now three against three. They've got a medium, a heavy, and a TD. So we've Got to be careful here. We're two TDs and the like. Put one into the Panther as he runs around the corner, but he gets one back. We've now lost half our hit points. However, I feel that in this game at the moment, we can probably turn this if we can get rid of the SU, and we do. That's their SU gone. Now maybe we can get rid of the AMX. If I can't, my Toon Mate will, which would be nice. I'm going to sit in the base just to annoy them. Um, my Toon Mate is going to push on the AMX. There he goes, takes him down. I'm going to be able to now push down onto their last and remaining tank. Hopefully get the shot in. No need. My teammate does it. We end up doing just over 2,000. We bounce 310. We get a couple of kills. I'm happy with that. That's not a bad game in that tank. To be honest with you, it's not exactly an easy tank. And we get a third class for our troubles. What about the credits? Well, the credits... It's not too bad. I mean, we only get 280. So it's not too bad, but it's not brilliant. The credit efficiency in this tank is not the best. And as you can see there, Everlum knocks out 3,000. I knocked out 2,000. But I'm happy with that game. It's a tricky tank to play. Let's have a look at one more replay and show you really what the tank can do. Here we go on mines. Now, in when you're in a TD and you're on mines, the chances are you're going to be very tempted to park your backside in the normal TD spot. I'm not going to do that. Reason being is because I've already got a TD there in a Scorpion G, and for some strange reason, we've also got a Saint over there as well. So I'm going to take my little Yag Panther and park it at the back of the map, but somewhere else. And I'm not saying that this is a great place to park your tank. But if you've got somebody in advanced spotting position like I've got here, the chances are you're going to see some spots. Put a blind shot in there to the AMX. Don't know if that hit. Pretty sure it may have just like glanced him. But uh, I'm quite happy being sat here. I may be able to get, if they come around the corner, maybe able to get shots into them. But I can see that they've got a TD. Well, they've got a couple of TDs. And I'm pretty certain that they're going to be camping at the back. And there is the Waffle Tractor. And this is a wayward shot. I just... Wayward. However, I'm going to drop the Adrenaline, load the, a load the AP, and now we're going to focus on the T28. And hopefully we're going to get him out of the game. So there goes 420. I'm not spotted. Oh, forget him. Let's have a look at this Waffle Tractor. Can we get a good HE roll into him? Yes, we can. 620. Nice high roll. And that's going to make him think twice about sticking his head around that corner again. Still not spotted, and this is the thing. Okay, I'm at the back of the map, but I'm in an active position. Here comes the IS-3, put a nice roll into him as well as he goes across, and I'm still not spotted. Why? I'm far enough back to be outside view range, plus, oh, can we get a good HE into him? Yes, we can, but it's only 200 because we just tinged his tracks. <laughs> I'm very happy with the fact that I'm sat here at the moment. I'm, I'm okay, they're not spotting me, and I've got shots going down. I've already knocked out 1600. Maybe I can finish off the IS. Yes, I can. Again, very happy with the way things are going at the moment. Waffle Tractor doesn't know I'm here. He knows that something's here, but he doesn't know where I am. Put another high roll into him. 592. We're now at 2385. And, you know, I was hoping that they'd break, but they're not going to. So now it's time for me to relocate. I don't think they're going to push down. There's only three left. Uh, two heavies and a TD. I know where the waffle tractor is. Not much I can do about that. Don't particularly want to push on him when I can go round this side. I think the AMX has come round here as well. 
I'm tempted to go up there, but I thought, no, I'm going to try and flank round and catch them off guard. That's my game plan. Now there's only two tanks left, the AMX and the Waffle Tractor. We're doing okay here. Maybe I could get around this corner and smack him with an HE roll. Possibly, hopefully. But I load the AP, finish him off. So, well, I don't finish him off. Somebody else does, but I get a nice roll into him. Now I'm at 2,897. Just the WT left. He ain't going to be going anywhere fast. That's going to allow me to push down on him. And I've got plenty of HP. Unless he ammo racks me, it's all over. Because I can put a nice roll into him, which I do. And second kill, we do just over 3,000 damage. We bounce nothing. And we have a relatively nice game. That's quite nice. And that's how I play the Jag Panther 2. We get 3,500. We did tag the AMX. We get a nice first class. And we get that uh, sniper medal. We get some pretty decent credits this time, I think. There you go, 28,000. And I'm happy with that. I'm very happy with that. And we're also the top damage. So this tank isn't as bad as people think. You can play this tank relatively nicely and relatively well. You've just got to be mindful of its weaknesses. Like I keep saying, play the tank to the weaknesses, not to the strengths. And when this tank is so weak with its lower hull, don't always go to the same TD spot. Well, like I did there on mines, I went to a different position and had a whale of a time. Now the thing is, I'm not trying to sort of say this tank is easy to play. It's not. It, it's really not easy to play. Now, a lot of people think that the Hori or the Ferdinand is actually harder, but it's not. This tank is not the easiest of tanks to get on with. And you need to give it a little bit of TLC. I... I used to love this tank, I used to think it was fantastic, but not going to lie, over time it's been power crept, people have got used to how to play against it, and that's one of the reasons why it's got such a low win rate. Not only that, new players coming up, they, they don't understand the tank as well as they should, and they generally put it in the wrong position, thinking that it's somehow pretty decently armoured. The mobility of the hull, not the speed forwards and backwards, but, but the mobility of the hull and the, the lack of armour really doesn't allow you to do that much in this tank. And my recommendation is start off by being a sniper, guys. Start off by, you know, sitting at the back, maybe not the usual TD spots, but sitting at the back and try to load an equipment loadout that's going to allow you to snipe. And you're going to have a lot more success in this thing. Resist that temptation to front line in it. If you've got that temptation, if you've got, if you know, if you're so determined to get up there, up close and personal, then park yourself right behind those heavy tanks, more like a second or third line support rather than sat at the back. But I would recommend for any new player, start at the back, and as as you get the advantage going through the game, the more you know, if if you if the, you've got more tanks on the battlefield than they have, then you should start consider moving up. Until then, take care nurture this tank protect its hit points as much as possible because it ain't that easy to play anyway i've been fujit that has been the jag panther 2 the worst performing tier 8 tank destroyer according to blitz stars by all means comment and everything below let me know your views and your thoughts on this because i'd love to know and until the next time guys remember this it's only a game so stay safe out there have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking because at the end of the day, that really is what it's all about, isn't it? Having fun and being happy.